going to give you a quick demonstration on how to assemble and use the 2L vacuum chuck system. First thing you do is it's an 8 inch by 12 inch standard size vacuum chuck plate. The modular system. You can add multiple plates together to make bigger systems if you need to. First thing you need to do is plug the end, the vacuum holes. Um, so there's holes on both the ends and on the sides. So you need to plug all of the ones that you aren't going to be using. And I'll screw in the vacuum manifold system now. That's just a simple thing with two valves and a vacuum gauge to let you show that the vacuum system is working. So you just screw that in. Then the next thing is you screw vacuum plugs into the top surface of the vacuum chuck. As you can see here, I've already screwed them in. So they're all where these black screws are. So the vacuum goes through all these. There's a straight hole through here and then the three holes on the side. So there's a total of 29 vacuum holes. And any one of these holes can be used to create a vacuum on the surface of the work table. Okay, and once you have all the screws in, I, I left one screw out because I want the vacuum to be exposed through this one screw hole. Then you simply, this is the size of the workpiece we're going to be holding, you simply place a spongy gasket cord underneath the area where your workpiece is going to be. And all you do is just press it into the gasket cord holes, the gasket cord slot on the surface of the plate. And that's pretty much all you do. So now we're just about ready to be to test the vacuum chuck system, and then we'll just place our workpiece over the area here. Okay, so now we're ready to hook up our vacuum system to the vacuum chuck table. There's two mechanisms for generating a vacuum. There's an air-powered Venturi vacuum, which you simply blow air into the air-powered Venturi vacuum, and it generates a vacuum on this end. And you can see by the engraving that it, it blows the exhaust air out this side. And these two items here are an air silencer to quiet down the vacuum a little bit. Um, but for our example here, we're going to be using the other method of generating a vacuum, which is a electric vacuum pump system. And quite frankly, it's exactly the same as an air compressor, except that it creates a vacuum. You just plug it in and forget it, and it cycles on and off as necessary. And so all we're going to simply do is take our vacuum hose here, which is attached with a quick disconnect, and plug it into our vacuum chuck system here. And then when we turn the valves on, now our part is held down firmly to the table. And I, I, I can't remove that. And if we turn it off and release the vacuum, then we can get our part off the table. Okay, so one of the... Um, uses for vacuum chucks is that people like to cut around the entire outside of a workpiece when they're manufacturing the, their components. So you can either just cut, a, cut around the outside while it's on this table, um, however then your end mills or drills or whatever you're doing will wind up cutting into this table. So there's two mechanisms for preventing cutting into the table when you want to cut around the outside of a workpiece. One is simply a, a, it's a rubber a hard rubber gasket sheet that lays over the surface of the vacuum chuck table. And all you do is you cut, it, it, it comes solid like this, and all you do is take a razor blade and cut out underneath your part where you want the vacuum to be exposed. And you can leave a thin rib like this if, you, if your parts are very thin and you don't want them to, to bow. So all you do is you place the rubber gasket sheet over the surface of the vacuum chuck, put your part on there, and turn the vacuum on. And now that's held down to the table, the same as without the rubber gasket sheet. Okay, the other mechanism for preventing a tool from plunging into the work table when you're machining it, other than the rigid gasket sheet, is there is a ground cast solid aluminum top plate that has a similar hole pattern and gasket cord layout as the vacuum chuck table. And all you do is simply place it over the vacuum chuck table. Um, you can secure it down to the table with brass screws that are included with the uh, top plate. And then simply place your workpiece 
over the top of the top plate and turn on the vacuum and now that is permanently held to the vacuum just as with the gasket sheet or if you're not using the gasket sheet. This top plate is a disposable plate so you can use this plate to cut around the outside and, you, and um, the, the end mills will cut down into this for whatever parts they're using and then they can either save this for that particular part or they can just throw them out and you know, buy additional plates. So one of the areas that 2 well wanted to actively address when we were designing and creating a vacuum check system is when you're machining there are often uh, large side forces that are put onto the workpiece and the deeper the tooling goes and, and pushes on the workpiece the higher the forces are. So what 2 well has done to address this issue is we've created end and side work stops that perform several functions. One is it allows you to locate your workpiece um, repeatedly on the vacuum check table. These are adjustable. Um, and they bolt onto the side of the vacuum check table and they can be moved up and down depending on the height of your workpiece. The other product we offer that addresses this side force issue and also for locating is we have adjustable work stops that can be screwed into the surface of the vacuum chuck and the vacuum ch into any of the holes on the vacuum chuck. Um, the holes are placed one inch spacing so it's easy to locate your parts. So you just put your work piece on the table and now you, if you tighten these, tighten these down you can put your, um, locate your part on the work table. There are also uh, edge clamps that are adjustable that will hold any size workpiece that fits on the table. And as you tighten the clamp, you, it moves the workpiece, it moves the clamp either towards the workpiece or away from the workpiece depending on the orientation of the clamp. There's a one and a two on the end of the clamp. So you can, if it moves, if it, as you tighten it, if it moves it away, you just spin it around 180 degrees. And now as I tighten it, it'll move it towards it. So now that's firmly clamped to the table. So these edge clamps can be used in addition to the vacuum or they can be used by themselves for holding your, your parts. Okay, the next item I wanted to show you was if you needed a work space, a working area that is larger than the 8 inches by 12 inch standard size vacuum chuck, how simple it is to connect multiple systems together. So all of the vacuum chucks are ground perfectly flat on all six sides, so they're all exactly the same size. Um, to connect two together, all you simply do is remove the vacuum plug from the end, place a vacuum connector in the hole. It has O-rings on it so that it seals. Place two alignment pins in the holes that are on the end of the vacuum chuck system and then push the two plates together. So for demonstration here, just so you so the vacuum chuck connector will be there. There's two alignment pins that will be down inside there. And then you simply place a vacuum pallet connector on the end and these get bolted down. These are made out of steel. And you just tighten these and that holds everything together. So again, these plates are all ground perfectly flat and everything is the perfect size. So we have customers that have held up to 10 of these vacuum chucks and created a very large working area. The next area we need to talk about is how to attach the vacuum chuck system to the CNC table of the CNC machine. If you have a large vacuum chuck array, um, you generally will just clamp these steel pallet connectors down to the CNC table using toe clamps so they can thread and bolt things down right to the table if that's what they want to do. Um, if you're using a single system, you can do the same thing. You can either clamp down to these pallet connectors or most people hold this, they just place the vacuum chucks directly into the vices that are mounted on their CNC machines. If they have the older, smaller vices, 2L has created a steel um, precision vice block that mounts onto the bottom of the vacuum chuck. And all it does, it has a line, precision alignment pins so that everything is held straight. And it's just simply 
pushed onto the bottom, and then there's screws that are bolted in here to hold the vacuum, the vice block to the bottom of the vacuum chuck. Now this is produced from steel and it's all ground flat, so once again, this can be held onto the magnetic chuck of a surface grinder if they intend to try to hold either plastic or aluminum parts that need to be held on a magnetic chuck and they're not able to hold it with a magnet. To summarize our vacuum chuck demonstration today, the 2L offers the vacuum chucks in four pre-configured kits. There's a one pallet system, a two pallet system, a three pallet system, and a four pallet system. The, there are accessories available, um, gasket sheets, top plates, different work holding accessories like edge clamps and work stops. There is uh, vice blocks that mount onto the bottom of the vacuum chuck if the, the vacuum chuck needs to be held on a magnetic chuck on a surface grinder or in a small vice that's on the CNC table. Additionally, there is other accessories like a, a vacuum manifold with a gauge that allows you to witness whether or not the vacuum is on or off. And then the only decision that is required by the user is to determine whether or not they want to use a low-cost air-powered Venturi vacuum to generate the vacuum or if they want to use the electric-powered vacuum to power their vacuum chuck system.